Welcome back to Falcon 2024 and the, and the Cube's live coverage. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and co-analyst, hey. Dave Vellante. Dave, you, it's day two, it's, it's post-lunch. You'd think that things would be quieting down, but I, there's still so much going on beh no, behind it, us. It, it's rocking, this is perfect for Cribble. I tell people, I got a ring at home. I wrote them down this morning when I was thinking about you. I got a ring, I got a Nest, I have a Simply Safe. I got a Google Home, I have a Sonos, I got a doorbell Cribble app. Cribble everywhere. I don't even know what it's called. I got a generator app, because it doesn't work with my mesh. <laughs> and, I, and I have all these things, and I'm like, ah, bring them together. Yeah, And well, so Cribble, problem, it, gonna solve that problem for IT. They are indeed, it. and they're right here with us today. So we have Vlad Melnick, he is the VP Global Alliances at Cribble. Welcome, Vlad. Thank you, it's And a Ed Bailey, Principal Technical Evangelist Thank at you. Cribble. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us, yes. So, Cribble, as Dave was just saying, has incredible momentum right now, and I know the company is just coming off a $319 million Series E fund, fund, found round led by Google. Um, tell our viewers a little bit about what you do, what the company's all about. Yes, yeah, so uh, Cribble is the uh, all about data. We are the data management company. We, it's a, we are the data engine for both IT and security. Uh, in the world we live today, and I mean, we're right here in the, uh, at the Falcon event in cybersecurity, it's, it's all about data. You've heard uh, uh, CrowdStrike uh, executives talk about how important it is to get the right data at the right time, you know, with the right action, that's what powers the way to the cybersecurity firms can actually resolve all kinds of breaches and attacks today. And that's where, again, Cribble comes into play because we allow and we help the all kinds of companies to route you know, uh, the data the most efficient way. Excellent, okay. So, okay, so uh, Bob Picciano, a famous former executive at IBM, used to say, data is plentiful, insights aren't. So you got data everywhere, you guys funnel it in, I wonder if you could talk about how you feed it in to CrowdStrike, how you guys work together. They talk about next-gen SIM, yeah. which was a brilliant idea. Why not? Why not just pump it into CrowdStrike? You guys play a real key role in that, in real-time streaming. Why don't you describe that a little bit? We have an alliance with CrowdStrike, no surprise there. Yeah. There was a massive, like a very powerful alliance announced. Uh, in 2023, I will let Ed uh, cover the use cases that we have right now right. with the Next Gen Sim because we're super excited. Ed, I, I love working with the CrowdStrike team with Next Gen Sim. It, we see it everywhere with customers. Customers are struggling to get the right insights from their data. It's way too much data. And then the, the cost is the collection and the storage, the values and the analytics. But too often times, teams don't have the time and the, the time to get to analytics. So we help them collect the right data, get the data in the right format, so now their tools work better. So now they can shift toward better detections, better analytics. Just a couple of, just we've helped customers transition over to next-gen SIM in a matter of days. Within traditional SIM platforms, that's just simply not possible. Help take the risk out of those migrations, so they're able to get value from their tools. Team, customers put enormous investments in these products, and typically with seven to nine month migration cycles, they're, they're burning up a lot of cash with no value. So now we say, hey, we can help you to get this done, and then, then you, can get, you can see value in days instead of months. And so it just, it's just value, of, value over value. Is AI helping that in terms of, as you said, that they, they're, they're trying to wrangle their data, they don't exactly know how to find out what the, they don't even know what they want to know based on what they have. Yeah, so we spend a lot of time helping. Now AI is helping a little bit in terms of analytics. Right now the variability of data on the observability and security side is a killer. In, there's infinite variability. And so the idea is right now we help with standards, we start, we start with the formatting of the tools, and then our big use case for AI is we're going to use AI to help, help our users use the tools better. It's a narrow scope and they see real value from it, instead of just the kind of inconsistent data quality you can see from other AI solutions. And then that's why I'm a real fan of how CrowdStrike uses AI with next-gen sim with their SOC. That, that's the real value. So can we go back to like, I don't know, late, well, 2017, I think you guys were founded. What was the state of the business that you're in back then, and how is it different now? Like, how would I solve this problem back then? Take us through the experience that your customers face today. Perfect segue, because I was just about to add to what Ed was saying, <laughs> that don't forget that AI also lives off the data, so the previous premise of what I just said, the growth of data is ridiculous, it's exponential. Uh, known fact, 28% Kager, 
And people think, oh well, what does it mean? Is it a lot? Well, it is a lot. It's literally 113%, which is you double your data in three years. You almost, like, this is, this is incredible. And then at the end of the day, the best data feeds the best AI. Yes. So what we see is, if you, if you refer back to the, our humble days of the beginning, is that yes, there was a, the same issues that we see now, they just now have been propagated to the scale that is enormous with the growth of everything else we see around us. AI obviously, but then don't forget, AI has also been used by the adversaries as well. So how do you secure that is a different conversation I'm sure to be had. But at the end of the day, we are living, live, we're living in the world of data and the data just keeps growing exponentially. So take that. Okay, so it takes yeah. about, you know, it does take about seven years to build a company. Five, seven years. And you guys are right in at about seven years. So what, was, what is novel about what you guys uh, have done? You clearly have traction now, as Rebecca said, you just raised more than $300 million in a Series E, so yeah. good things ahead. Uh, but what's novel about what you guys have, have done? Help the audience understand that. Yeah, do you want to cover the multi-product? Well, yeah, for, yeah from, my, from my biggest standpoint, we help customers get data from anywhere to anywhere. You see everywhere in the business, everyone's give me all your data, I'll solve all your problems. So that, build, that data mobility, that flexibility is key. The next is a focus on data quality. As Vlad mentioned, AI doesn't function with bad data. You're only going to get value with the right data. No security or, op or operations problem is ever solved with less data. So having more data drive helps drive us forward. And then that flexibility to then, the, the age old problem, I have 10 terabytes of data and two terabytes of license, how do I manage that? So because we can help that, and now we've expanded our multi-product portfolio. So now we have a Cribble Stream, that's, what, that's the product we had since the beginning. We also have now Cribble Search, which, which addresses search in a very unique way, and also Cribble Data Lake, where we're empowering teams to get access to cloud storage without having to have cloud skills. So that, that's, been a very, that's been very fundamentally revolutionary for our customers. So when, when a company like Cribble gets through, let's say five years, starts to have some success, mm -hmm. then you say, okay, we've got to keep growing, we've got to expand our TAM. A big part of that is ecosystem. Yeah. What's your ecosystem strategy? How are you, you know, connecting to partners? What do you bring, what are they bringing? Yeah, I'll, great question. I love to answer this question <laughs> since I drive <laughs> alliances. So, yeah, uh, we are an integrations company at heart. Again, what does it mean? It means that we have to collaborate with uh, pretty much everybody who we see here on the floor and many more. Uh, today, Cribble has uh, hundreds of integrations. We, are, uh, we just launched this year our formal technical alliances program. Um, it's been uh, on fire since the day we launched it in May. I have 180 partners right now in the pipeline waiting. This is a, a very exciting for, for us and for our team. Again, the message is very simple. We're being thoughtful in the way how we onboard them. We want to make sure that you know, there's obvious criteria, there's, there's a framework how we basically measure all of this and how we get partners into the loop. And then at the end of the day, it's all based on the needs of the customers. Whatever the customers desire, whatever the need, their needs are, that's what drives our selection. So. What's interesting too, you talk about the growth in data, yeah. and we've been talking about that ever since I've been in the business. And, and every two or three years we look back and go, oh, that was nothing. And I'm certain, the next two or three years we're going to look back in 2024 and say, wow, there's way more data now. Uh, and so, part of that is the big, the big buzz now, of course AI. Yeah. You know, what's throwing off data today? You've got all this unstructured data, you've got this social data, you've got applications throwing off data. Now you, you've got AI and agents, that's the big buzzword now is agentic. Heard it at Salesforce this week. That's going to be throwing off more data. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the data business um, and you're in the business of you know, Picciano's Law, data is plentiful, insights aren't, you're in the That's business right. of, of helping people get to those insights. What about agents? Mm -hmm. um, all this, this like LLMs are like passe now. Yeah. We're going into LLM 2.0. That's right. How, what do you think about that? Well, uh, so, <laughs> with regard to the data growth, don't forget also that there's plenty of the uh, assets that someone like CrowdStrike has to manage. They gave us the, you know, the uh, stats of like growth of 136% year over year, which is also mind boggling. All of those assets are also using and generating data. And then if you think about, there's a recent report that Cribble actually published on the uh, uh, trends and the, uh, uh, how the, uh, how we, what we see our customers, how they obviously push the data through. CrowdStrike has been one of
of the most desirable destination. We saw the growth of uh, almost two, two, and, two and a half times of just uh, using CrowdStrike as a destination for Cribble. Do you want to comment on the agents? Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. And that's why it's so important. With most vendors, the idea, you have to install our agent in order, to be, to order for us to work. But in the Cribble, we say we're going to support the agents you already have, the data sources you already have. So from a displacement standpoint, you're repointing your existing data sources to Cribble, and now you can start getting value. You're not having to rip out anything, you're not having to install anything. And so that gives so much more flexibility. So now, now customers are getting value really fast. And, and being able to handle just the, the chaotic environment of data that everyone's struggling with. Right. So you, you guys are really good at making those connections, technically. That, yeah, that's absolutely. what we do. It, it, it's, it's the fundamental basis. Like when I was one of the, I was, I was a second customer in 2018, when I saw that, he's like, you mean you can work with all the agents I have? Like what do you mean? Because I'd never seen that before. And that, that's what's fundamentally different. So, from a customer standpoint, what questions? I mean, Tribble was like a year old back then. I mean, they were new. Mm -hmm. So, and I love that when right. IT practitioners take a chance on a startup to solve a problem. What were the kind of questions you were asking them, the concerns you might have had at the time? And, and what are the kind of questions you guys get today mm -hmm. from partners and customers right. um, well, that, that you are the customer? Well, so here's the funny <laughs> yeah. part. Those questions haven't changed. What so I, so, I'm, I'm, I, so this, the funny part was the current CEO, so Clint Sharp was my sales rep. That's how yeah, early it was. Right. And so the idea is like, you know, does this really work? I need you to show me because I don't believe you because this doesn't make sense. Why hasn't someone else done this? And then they showed me and then I was like, and we, were, we did a small pilot and we were able to see six figures of value and it took about 30 minutes. And I'm just thinking to myself, wow, because I've now, I've now just seen something that's just really changed everything we do. I can now have choice. I don't have to worry about what my SIM vendor supports because I can change the data to be what I want it to be. My CISO goes out and buys, really sh shortly after we buy Cribble, my CISO goes out and buys a UEBA tool. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm just like cursing because like you know, nine months of work that I don't want to get into. We figured out with Cribble, we can now onboard that new tool. We did it in the afternoon. So now because we had control of the data as code, we transformed our data, the tool's working, I didn't have to install any agents. And that was really just, I was just, it just really changed my mindset about the flexibility I now have with my data and my tool choices. So now as an evangelist, I, I love yes. the, your description of trying that small pilot to sort of show, show this proof right. of concept. Is that something that you continue to evangelize or how, yes. how do you talk to customers about I, this? I, I, so I first talk to customers about small changes. In, in the days, I, no one is staffed to take on big projects. Let's, say, let's talk about a series Nor of- Nor can they afford to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about a small project. We're going to carve out a small amount of data that's now going to show big business value, and then we're going to see, here's how you're able to get value from this really quickly, much more quickly than you could before. And now here's, here's the value that in your tools, now your detections work better, your, your IR experience works better, and now we then move on to the next project. I think the whole idea about starting small and growing, it, it fits with companies' flexibility, it fits, it fits with their budgeting priorities, and I think the, the big thing is they're actually seeing value. How often do IT, and especially security, just feel like I'm getting value for my money? That doesn't happen a lot. Data is code, I love that. John yeah. Furrier first heard that in 2010 when he said data is code. Mm, that's yeah. interesting. Yes, well, yeah. it's and gold it's and it's oil and it's diamonds, <laughs> it's everything. Yeah. Yes. And it's transformative. That, yes. that ability to produce an event once and share it everywhere. It is code. Uh, that is a note to end on. It's transformative, really. Yep. It's, it it's all the things. Thanks it's all the guys. things, exactly. Yeah. Great story. Yes, Thank Vlad you. and Ed, really appreciate Thank it. You. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of our live coverage of Falcon 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis. Mm -hmm.